Hello, welcome everyone. Today we are going to be talking about Candy Cane Feast. Uh, this is the first question from the 2023 December Bronze Contest uh, for Yusuko. And this is a classic simulation problem. So we're going to, rather than uh, go through this text, uh, we're going to start off with an example for how the question works. The important thing to know is you have two characters. You have cows and you have candy canes. So in my picture here, I have three cows, the brown boxes, and I have one candy cane, the red box. And let's see what happens as the cows go through this process. So all of the cows want to eat the candy cane, but the problem is they can only eat the candy cane up to their height. So for example, the first cow in the line will step up to the candy cane and it will eat up to its height. And then it's going to walk through the candy cane and it's done. It's eaten all it can from this candy cane. As a reward from eating, for eating that candy cane, it's going to grow in height by the amount it ate. So in fact, it's going to double in size. So it's doubled in size and now it's going to go over here ready to eat the next candy cane. And now the second cow is going to come along and it's going to try to eat some candy cane, but there's a problem. The cow isn't as tall as the lowest point in the candy cane. So it's actually going to eat none of the candy cane. Um, and it's just going to go and because it ate nothing, it's not going to grow in size at all. Then we have a new cow, the third cow come up. It was taller than cow one used to be. So there is still some candy cane left for it to eat. And it's going to eat the candy cane up to its height. It's going to step forward. And then it's going to grow by the amount it ate. And then they've all eaten from candy cane one. And note that there is a portion of candy cane one left over, right? So there's still some left over. All of the cows get exactly one shot to eat the candy cane. So even though there's some of candy cane one left over, it doesn't matter. The, this, is, this will never get eaten. Then all of the cows will march forward. They'll try to all eat cow, uh, candy cane two in the same way. Then they'll try to eat candy cane three in the same way, where the first cow always gets the first shot, the second cow always gets the second shot, and so on, until all of the candy canes have been eaten. And the final question, the thing that we want to determine is the final height of all of the cows. And the sort of straightforward idea, right? So we can, right, this is a simulation problem. And there's a straightforward simulation process here where we loop over all of the candy canes, right? So for each candy cane, we look at, okay, what happens when the first cow eats it? What happens when the second cow eats it? What happens when the third cow eats it? And we loop through all of these possibilities. Um, and then we save that, we go to the next candy cane, loop through all the cows, go to the next candy cane, loop through all the cows. So there's a straightforward simulation here. And we want to ask uh, sort of what is the runtime of naive simulation method, right? So if I was just to, you know, loop over all the candy canes, then loop over all the cows, well, it's pretty, pretty straightforward to calculate. We're going to need a loop over all of the candy canes. So we're going to have a loop over all candy canes. This has size m. m here is the number of candy canes. And then inside that loop, we're going to have a loop over all cows. This is going to be size n. So we have a nested loop here. And the nested loop, right? So we, uh, we want to think about how many times is this looping in total. And the runtime here then is going to be m times n. And the question is, will that pass all of the test cases? So what we can see right here is that uh, M and N are both 200,000. So the worst case runtime is roughly 200,000 squared. And that's going to be too slow to pass all of the test cases, right? So that's about um, 4 billion operations. You want to shoot for, say, 500 million. So this is going to be too slow. You can note, however, you will pass test cases 2 through 10, or 1 through 10, rather. So you will pass a significant portion of the test cases just by implementing uh, sort of the naive strategy.
But we want to do slightly better than the naive strategy, right? We want all of the test cases. And one thing that we can go back to is an important observation with our little uh, sort of stop motion picture here is notice something interesting happened with cow one. Cow one doubled in size, right? So cow one ate as much of the candy cane it could, and then it doubled in size. And the question is, does cow one always double in size? If cow one always doubles in size, then this is a something we could potentially exploit in our algorithm, right? So we want to we want to work out does cow one always double? And let's think of the following situation. So cow one with height, let's say seven, candy with let's say height eight, right? So if cow one is height seven and the candy is height eight, then it's going to eat seven units of that candy and its height is going to become 14. So new height is going to be 7 plus 7 is 14. So it will double. All right, can we think of an example where it doesn't double? Well, what about if the candy cane height was really small? So let's say the candy cane height was 1. Then cow 1 with its 7 height would come along. It would see the candy cane of height 1 and it would eat the entire thing. So it would consume one unit, and cow one's new height would be one plus seven is eight. So cow one doesn't always double in size, but we've learned something new. So one of the following two things happen. So either cow one's height doubles in size, or um, cow one eats the entirety of the candy cane, right? So if the candy cane is shorter than cow one, it'll eat the whole thing. If the candy cane is at least cow, cow one's height, um, then cow one will double in size. Why is it important that cow one is doubling in size? Well, this is exponential growth, right? So uh, cow one would start at height one, then it would go to height two, then four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and it's going to start growing really quickly, right? So how many operations, how many doublings do we have to go through until cow one is just taller than all of the candy canes? Well, we could take a look at the maximum height of the candy canes. And in the problem, it tells us the heights of the candy canes are in the range 1 to 1 billion. So if the height of cow 1 doubles 30 times, cow 1 will be taller than all candy canes. Right, because how do we know this? Well, we can calculate 2 to the 30th, and we can see that that exceeds 1 billion. So if the height of the uh, cow 1 doubles 30 times, uh, then cow 1 will be taller than all the candy canes. Why is that important? Well, if cow 1 is taller than all of the candy canes, then we know that cow 1 is actually going to eat all of the can the entirety of every single candy cane. Right, so we don't actually... Uh, need to loop over all of the cows, if cow one eats the entirety of the candy cane, then we only need to sort of increase the height of cow one, then we can move on. None of the other cows heights will change because there's no candy cane left. So that tells us that there's at most 30 times in our simulation where we have to look at cows that aren't cow one. Right, because if cow one eats the entirety of the candy cane, then we just move on to the next candy cane and we don't have to increase the size of any other cow's height. So this gives us a new solution. We will um, loop over all of the candy canes. We will loop over all of the cows. But if cow one eats the entirety of the candy cane, which we think will happen all but 30 times, then we can immediately just move on to the next candy cane. So new idea. loop over all candy canes, loop over all cows, but then break if the candy cane 
has been eaten um, in its entirety. Right, so we don't need to continue searching over all of the cows um, if the candy cane is already gone. And this is what's going to save us uh, from having to do this loop, right? So this loop will only sort of finish in a very small minority of the cases. For most cases, cow one is just going to be so tall that it's going to eat all of the candy canes, uh, and we're only going to have to increase the height of cow one. And this is the important observation that saves us from an algorithm with runtime n times n. So the old algorithm had runtime m times n. New algorithm. Uh, it's a little bit hard to work out, but it's pretty simple. Uh, if you are familiar with logs, uh, we can take the log of the largest candy cane height. So log of max candy cane height. And then this is sort of the number of times that cow one can double before we're guaranteed to eat every single candy cane on the first try. And then that's just going to be times the number of cows. So for the most time, most iterations, we only need one to look at one cow, cow one. For a small fraction of the iterations, we need to look at more than one cow. So we'll just say we, we look at all n cows. All right, we're now ready to code up our solution. We're going to loop over all candy canes. We're going to loop over all cows. And then we're going to break if the candy cane has been eaten in its entirety. So uh, let's begin by reading in our input. So the first line of input is n and m. So int input. And I'm going to be typing in Python here just because I think it's the most readable of the sort of commonly used Usico languages. Uh, but hopefully, you'll be able to um, translate to any language that you like to use. Uh, so we're going to read in uh, all of our inputs. So the very first line of input is N and M. The next line is going to be the cows. And the line after that are going to be the height of the candy canes. So cow heights is just going to be same thing. And then we're also going to read in the candy cane heights. So let's copy and paste this. And the candy heights, we'll copy and paste that as well. All right, so first we wanted to loop over all candy canes. And then, so that's just going to be 4i in range m, right? m is the number of candy canes, n is the number of cows. So then we're going to loop over all cows. So that's going to be 4j in range n. All right. And inside each of, this loop, each of these loops, we want to determine how much of the current candy cane is the cow eating. So how much of the current candy cane is the current cow going to eat? And there's two things that can constrain what, how much candy a cow can eat. One thing that constrains a cow is its current height. Right, so if a cow is five units tall, it will never eat more candy than five. Right, it can only eat up to its current height. The other thing that constrains how much a candy a cow can eat is the height of the candy cane itself. Right, so if a cow is ten thousand units tall, but the candy cane is only one unit tall, well, that cow is going to eat one unit of candy cane. Right, it can't eat more than the current candy cane. So the amount uh, being eaten by the cow, so cow eats, is just going to be the minimum of the candy height, that's candy i, and the cow height, that's cow's j. However, there's a caveat to this. And the important caveat is that the candy cane might have been eaten partially by previous cows. So we're going to want to keep a track record of how much of the candy has been eaten so far. So candy eaten, it starts at zero. And as the cows eat more and more of the current candy cane, it'll increase. To account for this, we're going to subtract that portion off uh, from this value, right? So we'll calculate this is how much of the candy cane they could eat if the entirety of the candy cane was there. And then we're going to subtract off, well, this is the amount of the candy cane that's been eaten so far. One important note is this value could be negative or it could be zero. In either of these cases, this just means the, can the current cow is going to eat nothing. So we should probably skip over it. So if cow eats is less than zero, we're going to continue. Otherwise, we're going to increase the height of the cow by the amount they ate. So cow's i is going to, or cow's j rather, is going to increase by cow eats. 
And candy eaten is also going to increase by cows eats, right? So this is just um, saying that, okay, another portion of the candy cane has been eaten. So let's update that variable. Now we're almost done here, but we just need this one last step. Break if the candy cane has been eaten entirely. So how can we do that? Well, if the candy cane has been eaten entirely, then candy eaten should be equal to the height of the current candy cane. So we can do uh, for, or rather if candy eaten is equal to candy i, then we know that there's no more candy remaining. So we're going to break from this loop and this is going to go on to the next candy cane, right? So we've eaten all of this candy cane and we're gonna go on to the next one here. Finally, we're just going to print out the heights. So print out the cow heights and we'll be done the question. So this is for i in range n. We're just going to print out cows i. So uh, the sort of sections of our code is we begin by reading in the input then we loop over all cows and all candy canes. For each cow, we calculate how much of the candy cane it eats. Uh, if, it's, uh, if it doesn't eat at all, we skip to the next cow. If it does eat, we increase its height. And then we increase the amount of candy cane that's been eaten. And then once the entirety of the candy cane has been eaten, we break away. So we can save this code and submit it to the USCO website. And it should pass all of the test cases. So let's do that now. We'll submit and we'll wait for a grading server. Grading in progress, passing 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 take a while. 13 and 14 should be coming in just a second here. Awesome. So we passed all the test cases. Note that if you, uh, you sort of didn't have these two lines, so if we remove these two lines from our code, then you'd only pass test cases one through 10. So we can also save this and show the sort of uh, partial solution here as well. And we can see you only pass test cases one through 10 and you start timing out on test cases 11, 12, and 14. Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful day and happy coding as always. Bye-bye.